So today we are drawing rotations. Now of all the transformations, rotations tend to be the hardest one for most of my students. In a rotation, what you have to do is imagine everything on this coordinate plane just turning. All right. For example, it says draw the image after a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation about the origin. All right. So what that means is, first off, it says we're spinning about the origin. So the origin is the point zero, zero, so that's right there. So everything's rotating around that one point, all right? Another thing to notice is we are going counterclockwise. Now, whenever it says which direction we're going, the first thing I always do is kind of draw in a little arrow to remind myself which way we're turning. Counterclockwise is in that direction, so everything is going to rotate around that point in this direction, okay? And then the last thing to pay attention to here is that it's going 90 degrees. All right. Now, to help me visualize what a 90 degree rotation is going to look like, I made a little transparency here to show this. All right. So we're rotating around the origin. So I'm going to put my pencil on the origin. And we're turning this way. And I will know it's 90 degrees when the x-axis ends up at the y-axis. Because see how the x and y-axis are at 90 degree angles to one another? There. So when I spin this and the x-axis ends up on the y-axis, boom, I know it's traveled 90 degrees. Another way to think about it is 90 degrees is one-fourth of a rotation around 360 degrees, all right? 360 degrees is one full rotation, 90 degrees is a fourth of the way around, okay? So here, one more time. So we're going from here, and when that x-axis hits that y-axis right there, boom, I know I'm done. So this is what that rectangle is going to look like when it's rotated, all right? So now we're drawing this thing. Now a couple things to pay attention to. Notice, because this x-axis is going to rotate up to the y-axis, any points on the x-axis will end up on the y-axis, okay? Now, another thing to notice is the distance away from the origin never changes, all right? Because everything's spinning around the origin, that means the distance from it is going to stay the same. So see how point D is three steps away from the origin. When I rotate it, it's still three steps away from the origin. It's just up here instead. Okay? So, I always like to start by drawing the rotated points on the axes first. So, points D and C are going to be the easiest. Okay? Because point D is on the x-axis, and it's one, two, three steps away from the origin. So, when it rotates, it's going to end up on the y-axis, one, two, three steps away from the origin. There's your D prime. Same with C. C is on the x-axis, and it's one, two, three, four, five steps away from the origin. So when it rotates, it's going to end up on the y-axis, one, two, three, four, five steps away from the origin. All right? And if we want to double check that, here is the transparency again. Rotate it. Boom, 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 boom. There it is. All right? Now, the other two points are going to be a little bit harder. But here's how I like to think of it. All right, so I know A and B are currently in this quadrant of the coordinate plane, okay? When it rotates, it's going to end up in this one, okay? We know that for certain, okay? Now, A and B are not on the axes, but notice that A is directly above the x-axis, well, it's directly above point D, and it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps away from point D on the x-axis, okay? So when I rotate it, it's not going to be above the x-axis anymore, but it's going to be still seven steps away from point D in this coordinate plane, all right? So when we rotate this, A is going to be seven steps away from point D, and it's not going to be above, it's actually going to be to the side because it's going to be in this quadrant. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's going to be where point A is, A prime. And then for B, similarly, B is seven steps away from point C. So when it rotates, again, it's going to be in this quadrant, and it's going to be seven steps away from C prime. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There it is right there. B prime. All right. And if we want to double check that, we can easily do that by using my transparency and look at that right there. Okay. So once I connect up the dots, I should have my rotated rectangle. Now, one thing to pay attention to is rectangles tend to be a little bit easier because, you know, everything kind of lines up. But check out the orientation of the new rotated rectangle. Before, it was upright. When it rotates, now it's sideways, okay? Those are the little things to pay attention to as you do more rotations, so you'll start to be able to recognize what the rotated shape looks like ahead of time, okay? Let's do a harder one, though. This one right here. Draw the image after a 90-degree counterclockwise rotation about the origin. Okay, this one's not a rectangle, so it's going to be a little bit harder. But again, we're rotating around the origin, and we're going counterclockwise. Okay, so let's start with the easy point first, point G. G is on the x-axis, and it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 steps away from the origin. When it rotates, it's going to be on the y-axis, and it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 steps away from the origin still. All right? It's the other ones that are going to be harder. Look at F. F is in this quadrant. When it rotates, it's going to be in this quadrant. All right. Now, F is not on an axis, but it's directly above the x-axis spot at 3. And in fact, here's the x-axis spot at 3, and it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 away from the x-axis spot on 3. Okay, So you can almost imagine it. Here's 3, and then it's 7 up from it. Okay. Now, when it rotates, it's not going to follow along the x-axis anymore. It's going to follow along the y-axis. So instead of going along the x-axis at 3, it's going to go along the y-axis at 3. And then it's going to be 7 away from that axis in this quadrant. When it rotates, it's 7 away from the y-axis in this quadrant. So it's going to go this way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There is going to be our f prime. Okay, so last one, E. Now, E is kind of in a weird spot. It's in this quadrant. So when it rotates, it's going to end up down here in this quadrant. Now, to get to E, we would have to follow the x-axis to in this other direction. And then it's 1, 2, 3 away from the x-axis in this quadrant. Okay. So when I rotate it, we're not going to follow the x-axis anymore. We're going to follow the y-axis. So instead of going along the x-axis for 2, we're going to go along the y-axis for 2. And then we go into the quadrant three steps. Well, we know it's going to end up in this quadrant, so we're not going to go this way. We're going to go this way three steps right there. This should be my E prime. OK? So when I connect up the dots. I will have my rotated triangle. There it is. And if I want to double check it, I have a transparency to use. All right. So here, I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to turn it 90 degrees. And look at that. It hits exactly where I thought it would. OK. So some of the key takeaways here are, remember, if the points are on the axes, do those first. Those are your easiest ones. The ones that aren't, follow the axes and then go into the coordinate, uh, into the quadrant that you know it is. And then when you rotate it, follow the other axis and then cut into the quadrant you know that it's going to be in. OK? We'll do one more, but this time I'm going to switch it up a little bit. It says, draw the image after a 90 degrees clockwise rotation about the origin. So we're still spinning around the origin. But this time we're going clockwise, which is the other way, that direction. Okay? But our strategy doesn't change here. And that's the good news. Okay? It's just we're going in a different direction. And this is why it's important to draw that arrow, because it'll remind you which way to go. So let's start with the point on the axis. This is on the y axis, and it's seven away from the origin. So when it rotates, it's not going to be along the y axis anymore. It's going to be along the x axis, and it's still going to be. 7 away from the origin. 
there's my f prime. Now, the other ones. Let's do d first, okay? So d is in this quadrant. It's going to end up in this quadrant, okay? To get to d, I follow the x-axis, 1, 2, 3, and then I go into the quadrant, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 steps, okay? Now, to rotate it, I'm not going to follow the x-axis. I'm going to follow the y-axis, 1, 2, 3, just like I did before. And then I'm going to cut into the quadrant, 5 steps, and I know it's going to be in this quadrant, so I'm going to cut into this quadrant, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 steps. This right here should be my d prime. Okay. Now let's do E. E follows the x-axis six steps, and then it cuts into the quadrant, one, two, three, four. Okay. Now E is in this quadrant. I know it's going to be in this quadrant. So I, when I rotate it, it's going to end up over here somewhere. And I follow the x-axis for six. When I rotate it, I'm going to follow the y-axis for six. Two, four, six. And then it cuts into the quadrant four steps. I know it's going to be in this quadrant, so I'm going to cut into this quadrant four steps. That is going to be my E prime. All right? But you can kind of see the thinking on what I'm doing here, right? I'm trying to imagine where is the point now, and when it rotates, how am I going to get to that new rotated point using the same directions, just oriented differently. All right? So, connect up the points. Ooh, I kind of missed on that one. There we go. All right, so there is my rotated triangle. And if I want to double check, I made a transparency to double check. So when I rotate it, there it is. Okay. So hopefully you can follow along with these steps, and it will take practice because, like I said, rotations tend to be the hardest one for most students. All right? But if this video helped you, please hit that like button. Also subscribe because it really helps us out. But with that being said, good luck on your math, and I will see you next time.